In this video, I am going to be talking about and demonstrating dental dams. This particular one, I'm going to explain and demonstrate the one-step method. However, later we will post a video about the two-step method. Some of the instruments that you may see on a tray setup for a dental dam is going to be our dental dam punch. So our punch here, it has different size holes. So you see it goes bigger to smaller. Our bigger hole is going to be used for our molars. As it gets smaller, it goes to premolars and then our anterior. So it's like our canines and our incisors here. This here is our harpoon. So this is going to be used to help punch a hole in our dental dam to fit around the tooth. This here is our dental dam forcep. Our dental dam forceps have prongs or projections, also known as beaks, that protrude out of it. So that way you can place this into the holes that are inside of our dental dam clamp itself. And when you squeeze it, it will open bigger so that way you can widen your clamp to fit around the tooth. It also has this locking key here so that way the further you push it down, it will lock this into place. These here are our dental dam clamps. This one here is going to be used for our anterior teeth. You will see that this piece of floss is tied to it as a ligature. This ligature is going to be used in case that this were to fall fall towards the ground, go towards the back of the patient's mouth, the assistant or the dentist could grab this ligature to help retrieve it. This here is our premolar clamp and this one here is our molar clamp. This here is our dental dam. Our dental dam has a stamp on it because you will punch a hole with our dental dam punch into this dental dam to fit around the tooth. So dental dams themselves are going to be used to help isolate a tooth or a few teeth or a quadrant when a dentist is doing a procedure. So this dental dam here is going to help us create that isolation. This here is our dental dam frame. So our dental dam frame has an open end and a closed end, almost like a field goal post. So this open ended frame will go more towards the top of the head, whereas this closed frame portion will go more towards the chin, since this is going to be coming and sitting out of the patient's mouth. But these projections here that come off the side of the dental dam frame is what we're gonna use to wrap our dental dam around these prongs or projections to help stretch it and create that isolation in the mouth. So with our one step method, I'm going to be demonstrating us doing a dental dam on tooth number 28, which is a premolar. So I have our premolar clamp here already set up and ready. So first thing I'm gonna do in our one step method is I'm going to grab my dental dam. This one already has a stamp. This is really just for kind of viewing purposes, training purposes, so that way you can kind of see where the layout of the mouth is. Because when you punch your hole into your dental dam, you want it to kind of be in the area of the tooth that you're working on. When I am placing my dental dam on my patient, tooth number 28 is going to be roughly right about here and I want my dental dam to sit up like this on the patient. So you can guesstimate where it's gonna be at on your patient's um, mouth or you can use the dental dam stamp to help you estimate where to put your stamp at. So now that I've measured where I want my punch to go on my dental dam, I'm gonna grab my dental dam punch and I'm going to place my dental dam in between where the hole is at and my harpoon. I'm gonna go about two inches up and I'm going to squeeze tightly so that way I can create my hole here. So now that I have the hole in my dental dam punched, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my premolar clamp. I'm gonna use the wings of this clamp. Your dental dam clamp may not have wings. That's fine, you will kind of follow the same steps, but I'm going to place those inside of the hole that I made on my dental dam. So I'm just gonna kind of stretch it without ripping it. So very gently, I'm going to stretch it around the wings here and it is going to look like this. So now that I have my dental dam clamp inside of my dental dam and the one step method, the next thing I'm gonna do is place this on the mouth. So the tooth that I'm gonna use is tooth number 28. So I'm gonna pick up my dental dam forceps and I'm going to make sure that my locking me mechanism is forward. I'm going to line up the prongs or the beak inside my dental dam forcep, inside of the holes in my dental dam here. So I'm going to line them up. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to squeeze as tight as I can and push this locking mechanism into place. That way I don't have to squeeze and hold it anymore. So now I'm going to grab my extra material of my dental dam. So we're just going to now place this onto 
the premolar here. Make sure we have a nice, good, and you're gonna place this clamp. You don't want it to be resting on the gingival tissue, but you want it to be right above. So I always have the bow, which is this circle, circular part of my dental dam towards the distal of the molar or towards the back of the mouth. So that's that bow is always going to be towards the back. And I wanna make sure that when I'm placing this, I'm placing it right around the gingival margin and not actually on the tissue. The patient is numb. However, that would be quite uncomfortable. They would feel some pressure. And remember, you cannot numb pressure. So now I'm gonna place my dental dam frame. So what I'm gonna do is with these prongs or projections that come out of my dental dam frame, I'm just going to pull my dental dam taut around it. So I pull, stretch, and this is what's gonna help us create that isolation. You wanna be careful that you're not pulling too tight as you don't want your dental dam to rip. I'm gonna grab my ligature and kind of get it out of the way. And this is going to come out of the patient's mouth. My cotton pliers, I'm going to make sure that it is pulled tightly around the tooth and off of the tooth. I can also use a piece of floss to help get in there. Sometimes the cotton pliers are a little too rough, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my floss and floss in between those mesial and distal walls, so that way I can make sure that it is fully secured in there. You wanna make sure that your ligature is coming up and out of the mouth. Once again, this is going to be used in case it falls off or were to anything were to happen, the dentist or the dental assistant can grab this to retrieve it. To remove it, I'm going to use my dental dam forceps. Same thing, I'm going to line up the projections or the beaks of my dental dam forcep into the holes that are in my dental dam clamp. So I'm gonna squeeze once again to widen this and line it up, squeeze a little tighter, and it should come out. Once you have removed this from the patient's mouth, it's important that you check to ensure that your dental dam is still fully intact. If you notice that there's any voids or extra holes or rips that are inside of your dental dam that weren't there before, you'll want to use an additional piece of floss to floss those mesial and distal contacts to make sure that that tooth is cleaned out and that dental dam material is not stuck between the teeth.